Definitions in biology are always difficult because there are exceptions to every rule. What is a human may seem like a simple question, but the answer in biology is not so straightforward. Definitions are so vague as to merely reduce to descriptions. Here's an example I found in a technical source. A human is a bipedal hominin characterized by having a higher and vertical forehead compared with earlier hominins. The brain volume is about 1400 cc's. The teeth and jaw are smaller and the chin is prominent. Humans are the hominins capable of creating and using complex tools, solving problems by sense and reasoning, using symbols and language, and creating complex social structures. Over time, humans have demonstrated behavioral modernity and advancement. Let's notice a few things about this definition. First, it's really not a definition, but a description. So it is with any, quote, definition in biology. Second, notice that everything about it is relative to something else. Teeth and jaws are smaller relative to other hominins. Third, in biology, there are exceptions to every rule. It says, bipedal, walking on two legs, to separate humans from quadrupeds, walking on four legs. But humans don't usually start out on two legs, do they? And the average human has less than two legs because some people have lost a leg and some others were born without the usual complement of legs. So everything has to be hedged with usually. We wouldn't dare say that if a person had only one leg, he would, he would be less of a human. Now you might think all this laughable because we all pretty much know a human when we see one. Why would, then is the concept so hard to define? We'll find that other biological characteristics are equally hard to define because of the same variabilities and uncertainties. For example, gender is increasingly hard to define from a biological standpoint as we learn more about genetic anomalies, surgical modifications, and metabolic off-ramps from what is normative. Scientists and would-be scientists may try to use these anomalies to redefine gender and biological characteristics that the everyday person thinks they know without being a biologist and without a formal definition. So where do we find any sense of certainty in this crazy world of variability? Christians turn back to the sacred scriptures which have for millennia served as the underpinning of countless well-functioning societies, however humanly imperfect. The Genesis narrative in chapter 2 describes the creation of mankind and of man as the crowning achievement in that creation. Man is shown forth as the image bearer of God who was to subdue all of nature. In all of our scientific rigor, we have yet to surpass this definition. In all of creation, there was none that was his equal until God created woman, and together they were to populate and tame a wild earth. A fact that continues to challenge society is the nature of science to push boundaries and expand the human experience. We are theoretically capable of creating organisms that are part human and part tiger. Should we? What kind of existence would that monster have? But who's to decide that a short exceptional life is either good or bad without any moral underpinning? Without a moral standard that is outside of us, who has the right to decide what the limits on science should be? No, but we believe in God. We believe that He defines what is right and good for mankind. And when we leave that rock, we leave the only thing that brings substance and security to the world. This morning, we begin to embark on a sermon series entitled, Fearfully and Wonderfully Made, from Psalm 139, verse 14. This series will provide some anchors for the coming storm.